The three terminal regulator is really a nifty device. All we need to do when we want a regulated supply is to run an unregulated voltage into the regulator and take our regulated voltage out. But there are times when we can't use a three terminal regulator. One of the places we can't use a three terminal regulator is when we need a very high voltage. The highest voltage that we see in the three terminal regulator is 15 volts. So when a video game or electronic pinball manufacturer wants a higher voltage, they have to use something else besides the three terminal regulator. Also, when the manufacturer needs a supply that's a higher current supply, again, they can't use the three terminal regulator. The three terminal regulator is really quite limited in its current capability. And generally, three amps is about the highest we ever see in terms of a current rating for a three terminal regulator. Also, there are times when the manufacturer wants to include some kind of a protection circuit in the power supply. For instance, there's a protection circuit that many video game manufacturers use that automatically shuts off the power supply if the computer board shorts out and draws too much current. That protects the power supply and keeps it from burning up. In all three of these conditions, we cannot use a three terminal regulator. We have to use something else. And the part that we use is a transistor. This is known as a series pass regulator circuit. And in the series pass regulator, the unregulated input voltage is connected to the collector of the transistor. And the regulated output voltage is taken from the emitter. But how can a transistor function as a voltage regulator? Let's take a close look and find out. In this circuit, we're trying to obtain an output voltage of exactly 5 volts DC as a power supply for the game's computer. The input voltage at the collector of the transistor is around 12 volts DC. Remember, the input voltage of a regulator circuit is always considerably higher than the output. Well, what will the output voltage be if the regulator transistor is turned completely on? If the transistor is fully turned on, it shorts out between collector and emitter. This lets the 12 volts pass straight through the transistor, making the output of the power supply 12 volts. If we connect this power supply to the computer, we'll probably do some costly damage to the system. So we cannot allow the series pass regulator transistor to become fully turned on. What would the output voltage be if the transistor was completely turned off? Well, if the transistor is turned off, no current passes from the collector to the emitter, and the output voltage would be zero volts. To get exactly five volts out of the power supply, the transistor has to be turned on about halfway. If the transistor is turned on too hard, the output voltage will be much too high. And if the transistor is not turned on hard enough, the output voltage will be much too low. Seems like a tough job, doesn't it? Well, as usual, the things in electronics that seem difficult are really quite simple. To keep the output voltage at exactly five volts, all we have to do is put 5.7 volts on the base of the transistor. With 5.7 volts on the base of the series pass regulator transistor, the output voltage must remain at a constant 5 volts. Remember, the base of the transistor always compares itself to the emitter voltage. And in an NPN transistor, the base has to be 7 tenths of a volt higher than the voltage at the emitter in order to turn the transistor on. With 5.7 volts on the base, the output voltage cannot vary above or below 5 volts. This system is not limited to just a 5 volt power supply. We use the series pass regulator system for many different voltages. For instance, we might have a circuit where 20 volts was the input, and with 12.7 volts on the base, we would get exactly 12 volts as an output. In our monitor circuit, we have 145 volts as an input, and with 120.7 volts on the base of the series pass regulator transistor, the output remains at a constant 120 volts DC. Of course, the big question is, where does the 5.7 volts come from? Aha, the answer is simple. It's an integrated circuit, a special type of integrated circuit that's specifically designed to put exactly 5.7 volts right on the base of the transistor. The output of the integrated circuit is connected to the base of the series pass regulator transistor. This integrated circuit does not have enough current capability to drive the computer itself. But by driving the series pass regulator transistor, 
we can make a precisely regulated power supply with exactly five volts out that can handle the large amount of current needed by the computer. One popular type of integrated circuit used to drive the five volt series pass regulator transistor is this one. It's part number 78GU1C. This particular regulator IC is used to drive the 5 volt series pass regulator transistor in a stern power supply. And here's the schematic diagram of that supply. Here's the regulator transistor, and here's the voltage regulator integrated circuit that drives it. The 78GU1C is a four terminal regulator. Pin one is the common input, which is normally grounded. Pin two is an unregulated input. Pin three is the regulated output that's connected to the base of the series pass regulator. And pin four is the control input, which allows you to precisely adjust the output voltage of this regulator. Williams uses a different type of integrated circuit to power the regulator in this power supply. It's the type 723. Here, the 723 is used to power the series pass regulator that creates the 12 volt power supply in the game. The 723 can also be used to power the 5 volt power supply in the game. But the 723 cannot provide enough current to drive the high current series pass regulator transistor. In order to use the 723 in the high current 5 volt power supply for the computer, the 723 is used to drive a low power transistor, which in turn is used to drive the series pass regulator transistor itself. Does this transistor circuit look familiar to you? It's a Darlington circuit, isn't it? And here on the Williams schematic for the power supply itself, we can actually see that they've used a Darlington transistor as the series pass regulator. And here's the transistor itself, mounted on the heat sink of the power supply board. Gee, how do we troubleshoot power supplies that use integrated circuits and transistors? As usual, it's simple. We'll do it the same way we did it before. That is, we'll start by checking the output of the power supply. Remember, that's the way we do things. We start at the output and work our way back. If we start at the output and measure the output voltage and say it reads too low, remember you're going to switch your meter to read AC ripple and see if you have AC ripple. If you do, then you have to suspect the filter capacitor is bad, or even possibly disconnected. Bad solder joints often cause the filter capacitor to become disconnected, causing excessive ripple. But if you measure the output voltage and it reads too low, but there's no AC, remember, garbage in, garbage out, you're going to check the input and see if it's good or not. If the input's good and the output's bad, obviously the problem is in the regulator circuit somewhere. Well, once you have determined exactly where the problem is, simply turn off the game and check the parts in your power supply. You know how to check transistors. There's two transistors in the power supply. Check both the transistors. If they both check good, change the regulator. I guarantee you, you'll be able to find the problem. It's easy to determine which parts in the power supply have failed. And it's just as easy to obtain replacement parts. WICO is your one-stop replacement parts headquarters for all the electronic components that we use in games. And here in the WICO catalog, you'll find all the electronic components that you need listed not only by the manufacturer's part number, but also by the generic part number of the part itself. In the front of the catalog, the parts are listed by part number, and in the back of the catalog, they're listed by each manufacturer's type number. Once you've determined which parts you need, just pick up the telephone and call WICO. There's a toll-free number for each of the six WICO outlets. We're WICO, world's largest distributor of parts and supplies to the amusement, music, and vending industries. There are some high-voltage power supplies that we use in games that have to be regulated as well. For instance, the Bally and Stern pinball machines have score displays. And these score displays require about 190 volts to operate. But that 190 volts has to be regulated. It can't fluctuate very much. Well, we can't use the 723 to regulate a high voltage. The LM723 is strictly a low voltage regulator IC. 
When we want to regulate a high voltage power supply, we can't depend on those integrated circuits. So we have to make the supply out of discrete or individual transistors and resistors and diodes. This circuit is typical of those that we'll find not only in the pinball machines, but also as the power supply regulator circuit in monitors as well. It's a standard series pass regulator circuit with a regulator transistor and a driver transistor in a Darlington setup. But instead of using the integrated circuit, we use a transistor and a Zener diode. 